Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a basic box using one of Cuddle's templates. I think making boxes is one of the most useful and satisfying things to do with a laser cutter. And very often, a box is the starting point for other projects. So here, we'll make a simple open top box with finger joints, and I'll show you all the different things we can change on the template to get exactly what we want. I'll also cover how to measure the material, what is curve, and how to assemble and glue the box. We'll start by going to Cuddle's homepage at cuddle.xyz, and here we'll go to the template section. You'll find the link on the top left, and we don't have to log in for this particular project. So when we open the templates, there are going to be a good number of options, and here we're going to choose the open box with finger joints. So on the top of this page, we see a sample project. And if we scroll down, we'll see the flat view of the disassembled box with some instructions on how to use it. And if we scroll further down, there is an assembly view. Uh, we'll see that one in a moment. So on the right hand side, we have all the different options or parameters you can change in this template. And before I go through each one of them, let me tell you how to change any, any individual number. So if you hover over a number, then click and drag the mouse. If you drag to the right, the number will increase. And if you drag to the left, that number will decrease. And notice how the project uh, view updates also. So if I want to change this other number, I can click and drag. And alternatively, I can click on the number and then type exactly the number that I would like. Then I can press enter. Starting from the top, we have the first three options are the width, depth, and the height of the box as measured in inches from the outside of the box. So for example, the height would be the distance between the very top surface and the very bottom surface. So you would choose these numbers as you need for your project. When you change any of these outer dimensions, you can see how the inner dimensions are also calculated at the bottom in case you need to construct a box uh, based on something very specific you want to fit inside. So the next option to consider is the material thickness. The way the faces of this box meet at the corners in an interlocking pattern is called finger joints because it looks a bit like putting your fingers together in this fashion. And this number affects how long the fingers are, meaning if they are about the same thickness as the material that are using, then the corners are going to be really straight and clean. So it makes sense to measure it accurately if you want it that way. And I'll show you how. If there is any protective film on the material, it's a good idea to remove it. Make sure you zero your calipers before you take any measurements. Also keep the jaws of your calipers parallel to the material because if they're crooked like these, your measurement will be off. There is always going to be some variation on the thickness of the material. So measure on different spots and then pick a reasonable average. In this case, I ended up picking 0.125 inches. I think overshooting your material thickness a bit is not a big deal because it only means that the fingers stick out from the corners a bit, like in this exaggerated version. And you could even do this for aesthetic purposes. On the other side, making them uh, too short or too small compared to your material thickness doesn't look great and might make the box harder to assemble. The next setting is called the curve or curve compensation. And it's meant to let us calibrate the fit between the fingers or the tabs. So curve is an old word commonly used in woodworking to talk about the groove that is left after cutting something with a saw. So if you mark a certain dimension with a line on a piece of wood and cut right down the middle of that line, then you're taking a little bit of material out of the intended dimension. So the way woodworkers deal with these is that they move the blade to one side of the reference line. With the laser cutter, you're always cutting down the middle of any specific line. And the size of the groove that's left depends on the material that you're using and the machine and the settings that you're using. So for example, I cut this single stroke line down the center of this piece of MDF and with some magnification we can see there is an actual gap left by the laser. The markings on this ruler are 164 of an inch or about 0.4 millimeters. 
if we set the curve value to zero, that is uh, without any compensation for the loss of material, then the fit between the tabs is fairly loose, as you can see when I wiggle these two pieces back and forth. And by increasing the number, we can get a tighter fit that makes the box easier to assemble and can even keep it together without glue. It can take a bit of experimentation to find the right value for your specific needs and material, but in general, the default value in the template is a good starting point. The tab width parameter changes the dimension of the interlocking tabs. In other words, how fat the fingers are. And you wanna choose this dimension based on the size of your box because you want each tab to have a spot to go into with a little bit of material to support it. So for example, if I make this tab with bigger, you'll see that at some point, there isn't enough material in this corner to support the other tab. So probably the biggest I can get away with, with this size is about 1.4. Going in the other direction, if we make the tab width relatively smaller, we increase the number of tabs per side Let's try it out. And these can add strength by creating more friction or surface area in contact. But the limit here is that the smaller we make them, then we increase the cutting time and we might start weakening the material. In general, if I want a strong box, I tend to look for two evenly spaced tabs on a, one of the short sides of the box. So for example, here, if I increase now I have two tabs between the front and the left, and they are roughly evenly spaced at that point. So 0 0.36. Or if I want only one tab, I want to make it big enough that there is still some material in the corners to support it. Finally, the labels are completely optional and can be toggled on and off with this checkbox. And when you are ready to download the box, you can hit this button to download an SVG. So now let me show you some assembly tips. I like to put all the pieces like in the assembly layout and then I start with parallel faces. So the right and the left face go first because they're opposite to each other. After that, the back and the front go together and I try to press it lightly just to keep it in place. The last piece is probably the hardest one. So it helps to lightly tap it with a mallet until it sounds solid. Then I finish it by tapping it around wherever I see a gap. When I apply glue to a box, I like to concentrate on these major areas of contact. See how these two faces come together. To visualize all the spots that get glue, I like to push all the faces while flat in this assembly layout, and then I can mark these lines. And those are the spots where then I apply the glue. Of course, I don't mark it every time, but hopefully this helps you see it at a glance. Then I like to spread the glue a little bit with a toothpick. And once again, I assemble opposing faces first, so back and front, and then right and left. And then I like to wipe out the excess glue in the inside corners. Sometimes glue also squeezes out on the outside, so it's nice to give it a quick wipe at the end. Any leftover glue after this should dry clear, so you end up with a clean looking box. It's also possible to add custom features to box templates in Cuddle, such as holes or different shapes on the faces, but that's gonna be a subject for the next video. And if you found this video useful, you can support the channel by clicking like and subscribe, so you can help other people find it, and please leave your questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.